going on, everybody? Thanks for downloading the Voice of Bedlam podcast. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even remember the name of my own show. Well, uh, that long of a day, though, I guess. Me and John flying solo tonight. I guess that's not really solo. It's just me and John, like yeah. the Lone Rangers. It's like the Batman and Robin, but <laughs> I refuse to be Robin. Dynamic duo. Yeah, I just refuse but, to be Robin. But you know the Lone Rangers? I'll be Rangers? Nightwing, man. What, <laughs> what's the Lone Rangers a reference to? Oh, yeah, Airheads, man. That, yes. that movie is fucking awesome. Damn right. Yeah, it's, it's There's awesome. four of you. Awesome. You're not exactly alone. <laughs> Alright guys, you're not alone. Thanks for downloading. Uh, we're going to be shaking you through the next hour or so, breaking down the latest things going on in the NFL. We're kind of in a low of the offseason right now. You know what I mean? There are some camps, which means uh, bad news. There are some yeah, injuries. Sure. But before we get into today's daily breakdown, we got to tell you guys about our friends, our, our new sponsor, AngelsFriendlyGetaways.com. Now, they're having a great fundraiser going on right now and you can escape to Mexico all inclusive getaway coming straight out of angels friendly getaways and, and, and this com. fundraiser is to f- raise funds for uh, autism speaks which um, you know is a I, great I, cause I work I work in um, the IDD field and I help uh, transition you know uh, IDD individuals into the community to find jobs and uh, become you know uh, productive citizens in the community so you know I, it means uh, a lot to me that he uh, is doing that fundraiser so um if you if you know me um you know try to try to donate please you know because that is uh you know it, it it's a it's a big issue um and not only that the you know the funds are going to help people that uh you know need help and you can do all this at angelsfriendlygetaways.com. And you could do all this by just taking an inclusive getaway to Mexico. And who doesn't want to do that? Yeah, and but that donation is going to get you a chance to win that great getaway to Mexico. So, you know, that's, you know, you get a, you get a uh, nice uh, incentive, you know, to help out. And not only that, you get some, you know, karma points that you need, you know, because sometimes, you, know, you know, we all aspire to be great people. But sometimes we need those extra karma points. But not only that. It's good to know that you know money's going towards uh, helping people and, and enriching lives. All right, let's get in to the first story of today's. All right, everybody. As I said, we got some real bad injury news. Tough break for the Jaguars. John, why don't you tell our friends oh, about man. this, man? Uh, well, Jalen Ramsey, uh, well, and, and, and unfortunately, it, it, it happened to the same knee that he injured, uh, I think it was his sophomore year. Uh, Jalen Ramsey, you know, is also continuing that bad trend that these Jacksonville Jaguars are having with their first round picks by getting hurt in the month of May. All right. That is rough. Two years in a row now. Two years in a row now that this uh, injury bug hit their first round pick in the month of May. So uh, Ramsey, he suffered a uh, small meniscus tear in his uh, right knee during the on-field workouts today. And now they are seeking out a second opinion uh, because of uh, you know the severity of the injury. The uh, second opinion uh, with a positive uh, prognosis could mean that Jalen uh, could potentially rejoin the team by uh, training camp but if not you know you're talking about uh, he could miss like the six, year. six to eight months he, and he that's yeah that's that's almost. the yeah. season but so yeah. he's gonna you know so it could be the difference of you know joining them uh, for uh, camp or being on the pup list just like uh, our, our, our other buddy there uh, 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 Shaq Lawson <laughs> yeah, it gets rough. I mean, yeah, now this is a real tough break for the Jaguars. I mean, they're kind of trying to be one of those up-and-coming teams. I mean, I really think, we'll get into them a little later, but I really think that team is the Raiders, but the Jaguars are kind of creeping in their footsteps, you know what I mean? Oh, yeah, also in the AFC, playing in the South opposed to the West, but I mean... 
with uh, Break Bortles over there. And um, who's the wide receiver they got over there? Hearns or they got uh, Al, uh, Alan Hearns? Yeah, Alan Hearns. That's the name I'm looking and, for. Uh, who really started to come on last year? I mean, this is a tough break for the defensive side of the ball. They're really trying to get things moving. They picked up Prince of Mukamara in free agency. That's because they have a lot of young corners. Exactly, and they need, and but they need main veteran one people that have played to help explain, you know, some of the differences that they've noticed in their time in oh, the game. Because that, absolutely. that's, you know, snap count is a, a very valuable uh, commodity in the professional sports. Well, Prince of Mukamara has only, he's he just got out of his rookie contract with the Giants. And uh, he's also very injury prone. Like, he's extremely yeah, he, yeah, yeah. injury prone. He missed, he got injured in training camp his rookie year and missed most of the year. Came in during a candle Carolina Panthers game and he got lit up by Steve Smith, I believe, to yep. be exact. Yep. But uh, yeah, he. Uh, I remember. <laughs> I remember watching that one. That's why I was. That's why I was a, a little upset when Steve Smith left because you know when you know when there was that turnover, especially, and it happened a lot when Jake Delhomme was there. Uh, so uh, seeing him uh, making those moves and making those tackles and things, that's why I missed him. But uh, watching Prince get hit that day, uh, I I felt bad for him because. <laughs> Steve, you know, laid it out and uh but now he gets a chance though to be a part of this up and coming, you know, franchise with ugly uniforms and helmets. <laughs> um yeah. yeah, worst um, worst logos, worst uniforms like, like, in the league. You know, the far. the pants and the It's and, the helmet. And the it's the helmet. It, it's definitely the helmet. Yeah. All right. You might as well just like go full out and put like, you know, Jaguar print yeah, put some, on some, the thing. Some prints on it, yeah. You know, because you know, with <laughs> especially with Oregon and all the uh with the Nike oh, sponsorship. God, I hate you know, because you know those. What do you mean you hate those things? Oh, I hate the dude, Oregon those, uniforms. Those, those, so stupid. Dude, they I want do the Giants to wear blue all the time. Like, yeah, it's dumb. It's, it's not, not a dumb. uniform then. It's what not are you uniform. talking about? Ultimately, think about it in football, especially in are you this telling era me? Are of you telling free me? agency. You're rooting for a jersey, and I look at the jersey almost as like their flag. Do you know what I mean? And I don't. I don't want to see it desecrated. But. You're telling me if the Giants put out a, you know, let's say a black, uh, I mean, a, a black trim. They could do that but, in the Pro Bowl. You know, yeah. The, but I'm saying if they did an army fatigue in the Giants colors outlined in black, you don't, you nope. wouldn't want to buy that? Nope. I want red, white, and blue. Big blue Giants wrecking crew. I'm big so on tradition like, uh, when Veruca it comes to Salt football. So you like uh after she... Uh, you know, so that, you know, she ate the, the wrong gum that she wasn't supposed to have. And then she blows up. I don't she, totally understand the reference. What? Oh, man, Willy Wonka and the big blue punk, you know. Oh, oh, okay. it's Vi oh that's right. It was Violet. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, it was Violet that turned into a giant uh, blueberry. See, YouTube, you almost got me. See, I caught myself. <laughs> right. But, yeah, so no, no, that's what I see the blue men as sometimes. With all that blue, they look like, you know, Oh, the giant, blue men group? Yeah, it looks like either. Uh, I wouldn't even say that kind of uh, eccentric, but uh, definitely like the, the Violet from. Uh, uh, Willy Wonka so it's like a big giant blue ball and it's like dang man like you know you have nothing to offset that like absolutely not they the, have white and blue in there as well I liked it when they did the red jerseys okay I, I did like that as well also but I think the main reason why is because red is one of their colors do you know what I mean it offsets I don't want that blue instead out, of coming out looking like a giant I don't, blueberry I don't want them coming out wearing you know orange or green or some stupid or really far out stretch even that red it was kind of like the red in the uniform now actually for the first time the Giants since the red jerseys now those jerseys don't really get talked about if you look into that time period in history uh, the Giants lost some major division games wearing those jerseys they were mainly wearing them for home division games and they were all like I don't quote me on this but I think even the second miracle at the Meadowlands with Sean Jackson the Giants were wearing red when the Giants were beating them like a million to nothing and then they came back and won the game on a muffed a muffed punt return yeah. in the closing seconds the, but yeah those red jerseys had some bad luck to them but they are going to be part of some type of color rush this year trucking uh, along let's truck along because you were speaking of Manning with but we need to talk about breakdown. the other Manning because he's back in the news again. 
He's getting a beer, dude. <laughs> I know. That's pretty awesome. That's a pretty high honor. Before we get into this story, I it gotta took, tell you. It took, it took forever for Iron Maiden to get their own beer. Yeah. All right? That stuff's expensive, though. I, I see that around. The, the Trooper? Oh, it's yeah. delicious, though. It but, but um, I mean, check this out. Now, send we're some, talking some, some basically way, Bruce, a please. Denver brewing company is making a com commemorative beer for Peyton Manning called, of course, Omaha. Now, it's the Stone Yard Brewing Company and uh, out of Indianapolis teamed up with, what is the uh, place out of Denver that they're teaming up with? They are it's a Denver going brewery. to go through a pale ale with uh, Laura Bruns who said that they're going to be doing a hoppier beer in Denver. Uh, so With a version. Yeah, and it's also, uh, they're also it's going to be a craft. They're going to make a craft also. And um, Let's see. Hold on. The six packs will be uh, 15 a pop and only and sold only out of Facto Tom's tap room. Okay, I don't. So there we go. I think that's the uh, that that was the other one there. Now I got Facto another Tom. funny story about a uh, commemorative Sorry. beer here. Now look at this, right? Um, now you know we work a lot of music into this show. We're all really is. I'm a musician. Punk uh, you're a musician. Hardcore. Like <laughs> I mean, the the name Bedlam comes from me, Sean, Colin. That's our old band. And now, um, but so. When I was growing up, I was a huge Guns N' Roses fan, all right? And Duff McKagan... Aye, 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 aye. <laughs> Duff McKagan was the bass player, and he was the reason I wanted to be a bass player. Do you know what uh -huh. I mean? Now, Duff McKagan, The Simpsons, what beer does Homer Simpson drink? Duff. Do you know how that's named? After Duff McKagan, the yeah. creator of The Simpsons, a huge Guns N' Roses fan. Now, everybody knows, you know... Duff McKagan was basically a legendary alcoholic, and uh, I mean he's clean now and he promotes Duff recovery. Man. But you know, Duff back in the man. '80s, in the '90s, he was a big drinker, yeah, and I, that's where the Simpsons beer, Duff beer, comes from. Yeah, Duff McKagan, that, similar situation with Peyton now. Yeah, that yeah, well, definitely he's a homer for sure. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know, but it, this is a good beer, little, so this know, is a good little debate to get into, though. What? What is Peyton going to be more remembered for? Denver or Indy? Uh, well, he won one there in both places, but substantially more well, times. You know records, what? Honestly, with he's Indy. gonna. He's, yeah, he's gonna be known because that that stadium. Uh, and I think that's the like, reason why. Go I think that's the reason why Andrew Luck is having such bad luck is because it's still known as the place that Peyton built. I mean, Andrew Luck had bad luck this year. Besides that, he was one of the best rookie prospects to come out in. You know. <laughs> Ever. Yeah, but <laughs> but he's still playing under a roof that is still named the house that Peyton the built. house that Peyton built. All right, he's been he's been the starting quarterback there for quite some time now. So, and why why are they still doing that? Why I understand the I understand the 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 history of it all. And well, now, I mean, think of Steve you know, Young. Now, well, yeah, Steve, Steve Young, Young that, that legendary. You know, he always says I've seen him in interviews saying, "Man, I wish I never said that." When they won the Super Bowl, his first quote is, "Please, please get this monkey off my back. Get this monkey off my back," because he was always in the shadow of Joe Montana, and uh, 49ers fans were not happy that Montana was wearing red and white playing in the AFC West. You know, uh, with the Chiefs. So, I mean, I think it's a similar situation. Uh, also, when you looked at when Aaron Rodgers first came in, following in the steps of Brett Favre. Now, Brett dragged on his things a little bit longer, so eventually people got tired of him. But at first, everyone was like, no, no, we don't want Aaron Rodgers. We want Brett Favre. Brett Favre is a legend. Brett Favre is a Hall of Favre, Favre, you know, he, but, uh, he was my favorite for, you know, that era. I liked him. I remember. Uh, I, I still. I remember his uh, rookie card. Are we card talking like for Super Atlanta Bowl? Falcons. So are we talking Super Bowl Super era? Bowl, Brett well, yeah, Favre? that's what. Yeah, I remember. Super yeah, Bowl era, Brett so. Favre. Huh, I don't but he also had an awesome no, running back. So mm, I'm just saying. I mean, during that time period, the Giants were going through quarterbacks with names of you know Dave Brown, uh, the, the Danny Cannell. Kent Graham, all those winners, we'll call them. And, uh, yo, I get so mad when I hear Danny Cannell, uh, like, talking, uh, I'm not, uh, belittling a quarterback. And, <laughs> I mean, now, I mean, we comment on people's games, and we are nowhere near the athlete that the worst player the NFL has ever seen. I realize that. But when I hear Danny Cannell trashing somebody on the radio, like, I just want to flip out. 
I just want to flip out. I mean, on top of that, I met Danny Cannell when I was a little kid, when I was about eight, at a camp. Do you know what I mean? It was a Michael Strahan football camp, like the Manning camp. Do you know what I mean? Sleepaway camp, couple weeks, really fun. All the coaches were actual Giants players. Danny Cannell wouldn't give anybody the time of day. Playing on the basketball court, wouldn't talk to the kids, wouldn't sign autographs when he was there to sign autographs, wouldn't coach. He was just a giant jerk. And even at eight, all right, everybody's trying to get this dude's autographs. He's running back and forth from each hoop, dunking. I mean, I'm pretty sure he went to college on a basketball scholarship, I think. Don't quote me on that. But he's running around, ignoring all the kids, and the kids are just following him side to side along the court with their pens and their markers and their stuff. And I was like eight, nine, ten years old, and I was like, yeah, no, I don't care about this guy this much. I could tell then I was like, no, nah, I don't even want his autograph. So maybe I'm a little biased towards him, but... That's what was going on the Giants when Favre was really the top gun. I can't really think of who my favorite quarterback would have been. I guess probably Cordell Stewart. As much crap as I was talking on the Raiders. Uh, not the Raiders. Uh, Steelers. On the running, no, as much crap as I was talking yeah, on, running the, on the running yeah, quarterbacks. But as a kid, I mean, Cordell Stewart was my dude. <laughs> it's like, yeah, and then you got old and bitter. And then you're like, I'll go in the pocket, stay in the pocket, and just throw the ball. Yeah, that's what you need to do because now I understand how football actually works. Uh, uh, football is not evolving games you yeah, know but the and traditionalist new england patriots are a traditional team and they are the crown gem of the nfl uh the broncos won based off defense which is a key old school component all right and yeah. uh, things got better for manning when they got a running game so a uh, traditional is the way to go yeah, i'm not but, interested in selling jerseys i don't get any money from that but you know i want what? super bowls you, you want to talk about you know <laughs> fixing up things and making improvements why don't you take your cells over to knfilters.com slash because i like to say slash slash podcast knfilters.com slash podcast yeah the reason why you're going there is because knn engineering out of riverside california is the world's leading manufacturer of washable performance for uh, air filters and air intake systems um, K&N uh, invented the reusable high-flow Con Air filter in 1969. All right, and has been perfecting that technology ever since. Now, K&N is a world-class filtration company selling air filters, oil filters. Air tanks in over 50 countries. K&N sells over 5,000 products designed for cars, trucks, motorcycles, engines, and industrial applications. Yeah. Now, when you sign on with knfilters.com slash podcast, you're going to get a great little deal. Um, they're going to hook you up with some free shipping if you throw in that slash podcast and a free KN hat. You're also going to get, with any purchase of KN filters, a lifetime reusable air filter that a million mile, mile limited warranty and it's going to last up to 50,000 miles between servicing it's and the it, original it is the original filter and it's the original performance filter or nascar all and right as we said so earlier, go fast made in quality made from quality materials out of riverside california since 1969 head on over to knfilters.com tell them bedlam sent you you know why because a wise man once said if you ain't first you're last <laughs> <laughs> rick and bobby <laughs> anarchy anarchy i don't know what it is but i love it <laughs> that's like the i'm all hopped up on the dude i'm Chuck. all hopped up on mountain dew <laughs> I say that a lot at work, and like people look at me like I'm strange, so I just say it a lot more. It's kind of funny. All right, we're going to keep things rocking along with today's a daily breakdown. Yeah, man. Uh, a little late. I, a little late on the drop. I oh. know. I know. Well, there it is. The daily breakdown. Now, um... Basically, uh, shout out to my boys and God forbid. Yeah. Well, you know what? Uh, we're actually. Why don't we tell them? We were just telling you guys about um, how you know being into music and everything. Why don't we and tell, pop culture? Yeah, definitely. Why don't we tell you guys about um, Breezy and Sane LLC? No. All right. Now, as an independent musician, there are many struggles, whether on the road or in the studio. Most definitely, and I, I can attest to that because uh, I did a mini tour with uh, my band Beneath the Dead Sky, and you know, uh, finding out, you know, was the promoter gonna pay us? Are we gonna be able to wash ourselves? Well, 
Breezy Insane LLC, they will aim to make sure that your independent musician lives are made a lot easier, okay? So they're gonna provide you with access to worldwide promotional services with state-of-the-art marketing techniques to boost your music to new audiences. All right, they also provide mass CD production. So now these are real CDs. We're not talking CDRs and CDRWs burning at your computer. I remember them days. Bedlam punks making demos in the basement. Oh, man. <laughs> you know, but they're, they're also going to be, uh, they're, they're going to cover you legally. All right. Yeah, and they're also going to help you out with any beauty products or roadside assistance you need while you're on the road. Heck yeah, man. You don't want to be stinky when you're out there performing. All know? right. They have partner companies ready to help you out no matter where you are at a price that won't break the bank. Focus on the music and let them take care of the challenges on the road. And make your tour manager's life a lot easier. And now, remember, you guys can find them up on Google. Go Google their name. It's B-R-E-E-Z-Y-N-S-A-N-L-L-C. That's B-R-E-E-Z-Y-N-S-A-N-L-L-C. E. <laughs> LLC. LLC. All right. But basically, you mentioned, God forbid, we're going to start having. Now, we've had some NFL people. We had John Schmelk over yep. with the Giants. We got Sam Stocks up on the blog. Yep. Um, you know, he's going to be a reoccurring guest. But yep. we're also going to be working in some of uh, the connections from some of our, you know, our past. And yeah. why don't you tell some of the people about uh, who yeah, we might definitely. have Yeah, definitely. I just, uh, I just reached out to a friend of mine, uh, Corey, uh, Corey Pierce. He's uh, now he's uh, helping out out uh promoting for a bunch of bars and things uh but he was uh famously known for being the drummer for god forbid and uh you know I now, just, what is he a redskins fan yeah he was a, he was a skins fan which you know most of the time um you know and he loves barbecue he's a he's a barbecue man whiskey whiskey well, knowledge is what he likes to be known for his whiskey knowledge um um uh, he, I just remember having a lot of good conversations with him uh, when it came to sports, and especially since you know we are we come from that punk and hardcore mentality. Um, you know, he his band you know kind of helped transform that new American metal movement. You know that included. Uh, having breakdowns and that hardcore element with the metal, you know, and, and you know, people called it metalcore. I, I just like to call it that new American metal movement. Like, you know, it's like, <laughs> like, cause it, cause it really was. Because Dude, there's so many, it, it's, there's way too many names because for different genres because of music. It, like, it, they fall into call that, it metal. <laughs> they call it, they fall into that category that, uh, you know, followed the, the trends of uh, at the gates, you know, that thrashy, you know, kind of punky, you know, just ah just yeah they they came at you and not only that it was funny uh because you know not only was i a fan of the band but then uh through uh the graciousness of the universe and how it works out um i became friends with them and uh had great conversations so i want to bring him on and uh we're gonna get him on there and we're and we're gonna talk about uh you know how we usually do skins football with keeping them. it real but let's get back in to the nfl and uh john what's going on down in uh, Charlotte over there next well, week? Well, the uh, owners uh, are going to convene on Tuesday in Charlotte, you know, the hometown of my uh, NFC champion, Carolina Panthers, um, and they're going to consider proposals to change the uh, replay system. Now, um, this will be presented by the competition committee as well as the Baltimore Ravens. Uh, as per Sean Wagner, make go of uh, CBS Sports. Yep. Uh, the committee's uh, proposal would allow for officials to communicate with the league representatives during reviews regarding administrative issues, end quote. So, so now, what this basically means, it, they're not going to be able to be debating catches. And like, it's not like yeah. they're going to be able to say, buzz down and be like, no, Des Bryant had the ball, which he did not. I'm sorry. It's not because I'm a Giants fan. To me, you got to maintain possession throughout the catch. If you're hitting the ground, off the catch. Now, it'd be different if he was running with the ball, hit the ground, and it bounced out. Ground can't cause a fumble. But you got to make the catch. 
before it comes out. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I never thought it was a catch. From the moment I saw it live, I said, that's not a catch. Yeah. Everybody thinks I'm crazy. It's not because I'm a Giants fan. He didn't maintain possession. But if you think it should have been a catch, this isn't even going to fix that. Basically, what this is, is for down and distance, time management. There was that game last year where they screwed up. I forget how many seconds they took off, but they screwed up the clock. So this would fix something like that. Yeah. Stuff on penalty enforcement, especially you know with a lot of the new rules coming out, like the uh, call it like the technical foul ejection rule and all that. Honor. Now, the reason why they don't just run with this and they don't completely open it up is because around. Um, like that one o'clock Sunday slot, there's so much going on. They don't think that the people in New York or Dean Blandino or his staff, uh, the uh, head of the officiating committee, would be able to keep an eye, a close look on everything. Then why don't they have on. a fan run committee that no. runs as a supportive? Uh, you no, know. you can't what? have a fan run committee. Yo, no, you Meddling get you get you game. get amateur. I'm a fan. You get, I, I you get amateur meddling. referees oh, that yeah. are at the collegiate yeah, level. Fix every. Thing. And then you get them to work on your team. If you're, if that's your excuse, you don't have enough manpower, and you make money off of other people playing a game, then you have problems, sir. And you just, you just need to allocate those funds to new areas. Now, all right. Now let's get out of pretend land and get back to what real. What do you mean pretend you land? Not have what fans mean, interfering man? in any way, shape, or form with the game at all. I am a fan. I love the Giants. I want them to. Compete, but ultimately, I want them to win, and I'll tell you, I'll cheat for the Giants. <laughs> I got you, but you know, then where's your integrity, man? Screw where's it. your integrity? I love the Giants. Now, basically, you love the Giants. This was now. I, I want to see the Giants win fair. I'm exaggerating, exactly. but you can't have fans meddling in the game. But this was allowed. They did do this in the playoffs this past year, and kind of like they did with the field goal or the extra yeah. point, how they kind of gave it a trial run, and then and then they got it approved. So basically, they're going to see if they get it approved. I believe it would need 24 owners. To confirm anything something's debated on, that's what the rule is. Well, 20, uh, 24 owners, which would be, I guess, three quarters. Yeah, you know, it's uh, it, it's kind of sad because, you know, you don't really think of, uh, you know, the how... How officiating really affects a game's outcome until you're on the receiving end of a bad call, and that game is uh, decided based off of that call. And uh, you know, I know you met. You know. I think every fan's been there, though. Yeah, and exactly. So you know, to address this issue, uh, you know, you have to give and take. All right, so you can't just have the picture perfect thing of oh, I need my. Um, you know, I need my game flow of the game to be a certain way. It's like your lazy butt wasn't doing anything on a Sunday anyway. So you're going to sit around and watch the game regardless. Who cares if it ex takes an extra 15 minutes to make sure a call was made correctly? All right. All right, if well, anything, the players are going to enjoy it because they get a chance to rest for a little bit. But then again, it could also be a big bane of existence if it gets to the point of how... Remember when uh, Beyonce blew up the power at the Super Bowl? Please, I hate to, yes, 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 she, yeah, she blew up all the power supply, and then, yeah, and then, and then, like, then the uh, 49ers came out and they were starting to get stiff because they were waiting so long for everything to go back to, you know, that happens to get back on. Know, yeah, yeah, so you Muscles know, cool off exactly. So, there, you know, there's that as well. You know, I'm not going to negate the science of that. Um, but, you know, obviously it doesn't need to get to that ridiculous level, but, you know, obviously it needs to be addressed so that we have, you know, concise uh, games being uh officiated so that when we talk about these games we don't have to put a little asterisk and be like hey buddy you know the giants would have won the super bowl if the if they didn't do such and such and if that call against this person it wasn't called and that and that or you know hey the panthers would have made the nfc championship game if you know that call against cam newton didn't get called and when it was a non-foul you know so we we just need to uh, we need to voice our opinions, uh, make sure that they're educated people. Come on, let's put some thought into it. But you know, this is a this is a move towards a, the right direction, I believe. All right. Well, uh, one thing we also got to tell you guys about is BrazilianAmericanLove.com. Now, BrazilianAmericanLove.com is a brand new dating site yeah. conducting 
Americans with beautiful Brazilian men and women. Yeah. Now, basically, if you're looking for you're looking some romance, for a Latin lover, if you're looking to speak so, Portuguese yeah. to you, <laughs> to tender. exactly, you guys need to hit up BrazilianAmericanLove.com. <sighs> and now, believe me, you can find love on the internet. Me and my wife are going to celebrate our four-year anniversary on Sunday. Met her on the internet. That's also going to be my older daughter's two-year uh, birthday. She was born on our second year anniversary. We've been married for I think four. a lot of relationships now get started from the internet. You know, the taboo-ness yeah, so of like, back in board. our age of like the MySpace and stuff. Uh, you know, that's changed. You know, MySpace kind of pushed the uh, relationship online thing. Yeah, remember when the... chat rooms were deadly? Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. The AOL chat rooms. and Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah but oh, head over to Brazilian uh, Brazilian American Love. Yeah, find, find yourself a Latin lover. Find some lover. love. Find some romance in your life. Life is too short. Love Love it up. Now, basically, we got one last little thing here to do with today's daily breakdown. Is our worst enemy. All right. Now, basically, I like to keep the integrity of the show. All right. But and by doing that, I think we should really focus on matters with the NFL. But this uh, next Wait, news bulletin what? hits a little close to home with yeah. me. Yeah. And I don't know why you're you're even preamble in that because what Greg People Hardy are here to hear Greg, about football. Greg Hardy, you know, committed domestic violence involving guns. You know, and there's always we're always talking about the legal problems that these athletes have. You know, this this is a social issue, and not only that, you know. People are coming to listen to us because we keep it real, and I would like to think that you know uh, they know that we keep it real because of our punk and hardcore mentality. You know, I I've been in and out of uh, mostly hardcore bands, you know, my whole life. So and hardcore changed my life for the positive because you know bands like Bad Brains. Uh, minor minor threat. threat, you know, you know, and, and all hanging, the DC you know, bands. All, you know, hanging out with this guy back in eighth grade, you know, <laughs> we were with listening. Giant yeah, mohawk. Yeah, the the that you know, this. Let me put you in a time capsule here. You know, the the Slipknot self-titled album just dropped. All right, you know, new metal was running rampant, so there was a lot of. Ooh, ah, bah, boom, bah, bah, boom, ah, you know, and Jonathan you know, Davis. And, yeah, and we're and we're sitting there listening to Sex Pistols and and, and, Ramones. and, and Ramones. All right. Right? So um, eventually, you know, I, I started getting into like the Gorilla Biscuits and, you know, elevating to the hardcore level and really connected with the PMA mindset, which is positive mental uh, it, 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 attitude, guys. It's just, about yeah, attitude no, it, it just because like <laughs> it just it just makes me upset that you have to tell people to think positively you know the that positive mental attitude because how many times have you had to defend your music yeah how many times have you had to defend your music to people that didn't understand yeah absolutely you know and that's why i'm getting upset because you know not only do we get looked at as you know uh hooligans you know like the soccer hooligans that you know uh cause anarchy you know because anarchy, you know because they see the videos of the mosh pits and they see arms and legs flailing and you see people just erupting into just pure violence but you know what i'll tell you right now and coming from you know the heart of this hardcore kid right here when somebody falls down in that pit you pick your brother or your sister up and you get back up and you enjoy the show all right but let's get back to what i was talking about basically uh, in Union, New Jersey, Mike Gaffney was shot and killed by an off-duty police officer in a bar. Now, I knew Mike Gaffney. I worked with Mike Gaffney. Mikey used to be my dad's roommate. I knew him for a long time. He was a great dude. Now, he was murdered by an off-duty police officer. I'm not going to get too much into the details here, but basically what happened was, you know, some things happened. People started running their mouths, and um, basically the police officer, the off-duty police officer, let his mouth write some checks that his butt couldn't cash. So once the physical altercation was over and had been broken up, 
Mikey was being pulled back with his arms behind him, people pulling them apart. The off-duty cop got up, shot Mikey three times, close range, out in front of the bar, dead on the scene. Now, Mikey was out celebrating his uh, daughter's Academic Achievement Award. She's gotten it every single year. They were out celebrating. She's 14, and this little girl's going to have to grow up without a father for the rest of her life. No, He's also survived experience. by his poor, his poor grieving mother and his brother Frankie. Now, basically, one of the main reasons I want to tell you about this is there's a petition going around online. You can find it up at thevoiceofbedlam.com. You can find it at facebook.com slash vobpod. And um, it's a petition online. I think it's called Justice for Gaffney or Justice for Mikey. And they're petitioning Governor Chris Christie of New Jersey to uh, pass a law that says that um, off-duty police, police officers can't be carrying their service weapon with them while they're at a bar. Because basically the cop was drunk and that's how this all started. It was just a drunken, the cop was really intoxicated, got out of control. Mikey originally tried to defuse a situation, got wrapped up in it, and then after it got physical, after it was broken up, yeah. the cop, kill, cop killed him, cold blood, Union, New Jersey, off-duty Newark cop. Look it up online. Yeah. You'll find the petition. It's up at those spots, and you can find more about the story. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, you know, this, uh, you know, this also is a, a big uh, problem with me. And uh, because, you know, not many people, you know, know, I guess, uh, how I was brought up. But to give everybody kind of just a brief background, you know, I was adopted into a black family. And, uh, you know, and I was born in 86. So tail end of 80s, early 90s, you know, uh, racial tensions, uh, you know, were still pretty heated, you know, and, and my family caught a lot of flack for that. And honestly, you know, I, I can't thank my parents enough for providing that, uh, you know, that uh, that loving environment for me to grow and to uh, become the person that I am today to see the world as it truly is, because I see people for people and honestly growing up that way i was taught um, by a wise man and that wise man being my uh, grandfather to basically you know to in a nutshell treat the janitor just like the ceo of a company absolutely you have to respect people with no blanket, matter what no matter you what come to the table with but respect. also you but people also are forgetting that you need to conduct yourself in a certain manner to command respect all right if you're gonna walk around like an ignorant piece of flesh i thought you were gonna say something else like. you are not going to you're, you're not commanding the respect but you're still you know, you're commanding the respect but you're not earning that respect and you know the sooner that we address the, the mental health issues of post-traumatic stress disorder and how it affects our uh, officers who are in the front lines of, you know, duty, uh, you know, because most of the times when you're calling the cops, you're not calling them to come to get, uh, you know, a cat out of the, you know, the tree or anything like that. It's usually because there's a domestic uh, uh, issue going on. There's shots fired, you know, and in this point, it, you know, I was always taught to, if you're in a situation where you need a gun, why are you in that area? Why would you <laughs> voluntarily put, you in a, put yourself in a situation where the only solution that you have to protect yourself, to keep yourself safe, is a gun? See, now, with me, I understand what you're saying, but we don't know if there's any connect with PTSD in this officer. This was a drunk man who shot someone because they got embarrassed when they talked a bunch of crap and couldn't back it up. Most definitely. That's they, what they happened ego. here. And, I mean, I think that's a major problem with the police force in general. Now, I'm sorry. This is not a black or white thing. Not at all. All right? It, this is more it, of a rich and poor and power the rich are the ones with the power and if you don't have the money you don't have the power and they can they need to stop taking advantage just because you have a badge and you're given a gun does not mean you can shoot someone because they roughed you up after you started it 
I, I'll tell and you the what. fight was diffused. It's not like he was standing on top of him, beating the crap out of him, and in self-defense, this officer shot the man. The fight was broken up. The man's arms were held back. Yeah, so he, he pulled a coward move. And not only that, you know, the, the fact is that the... The way that guns are uh, maintained, you know, or I should say, uh, you know, uh, permits for, you know, conceal. The way uh, they're distributed. The way they're distributed. Sorry. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm just like, I'm, I'm a little frazzled right now because, yeah, this is, this is a hot topic issue for me because, you know, I've been dealing with uh, social injusti uh, injustice my, almost my whole life, you know, just because of, you know, there was a different pigment of skin, you know, because uh, justice is blind. And uh, the Duke case. Right. The Duke case is one of the prime examples as well that justice is blind for all races, though their lawyer had to get a textbook, you know, a college textbook to learn how to read DNA profiling in order to get their stu th those students acquitted of the rape that they did not commit. <laughs> all right. So, yes, there is a big problem with the Justice Department. And you know what? I don't understand it. You're Because when you take off that badge, you're just another POS just like me. And just like him. You are just another person. And your job does not hold any certain standard that should be respected higher than anybody else's because that's the problem. All right. You signed up for a job and now all of a sudden you want to become a hero because you signed up for a job. Well, you know what? I, you know what? I'm going to tell you right this and I'm going to and I'm going to probably make a lot of people mad. And I say this on Veterans Day you, for anybody that has not been drafted. You cannot call yourself a hero when you got a check. If you got paid to do a job, you did your job, sir. Thank you. And then you know what? Respect the person at Burger King that made your Whopper your way, too. All right, all right. But, I mean, a lot of social issues, a lot of social issues. Respect is always important. I think when it comes to police, even when they have that badge, it's even more important, I think. I think police, they shouldn't be above the law. They should be held to a higher standard. Do you know what I mean? They should be the example. They're supposed to be a servant to the court. They're not supposed to be getting drunk in bars shooting people. There should be limits of terms of active police duty. Like, the one thing that I I've always been preaching since I was a, you know, in high school, which I've always been called like a heretic, you know, uh, a, you know, You're a Satanist. A heretic? <laughs> oh, dude, I, yeah, uh, because I was asking questions. I didn't know people it, use that term. Uh, well, it, it's, you know, I basically, you know, was uh, very well shunned in the church for asking way too many questions that, you know, what do contradict their, their ideology, which I was just trying to find out, you know, my answers to my questions, you know, because I thought that the, the, fuel of the question is you know the, the biggest journey of it all to understanding but whatever um like i said i've been treated uh, a certain way for you know trying to say that u.s senators and u.s representatives need to be limited on their terms and not only that police officers oh, absolutely and not only that police officers should be limited to the amount of patrol hours that they can serve you know because you know i'm not going to negate there are, there are times that the police are very well needed all right and they get put into situations that we wouldn't want to deal with and that's why we call them right so with that being given that and they're in a danger job, you should not be in that job for an extended period of time, especially in active duty. In a sense, if you're going to if you're going to treat it like military, you should not be in active police duty for more than a few years. And not only that, you need to go seek. All right. Mental psychiatric evaluations each year as part of your yearly review, because every job should have a yearly re review. And you tell John works in mental health. Exactly. <laughs> right. All right. So then, then you can you can track the progress, and when you see that he's a good officer, but you know the workload is really you know breaking him down and breaking down his psyche, you put him on paperwork. You know what? There's tons of people that are probably good per, uh, people skills, and they can't pick up a pen and write. 
Especially since I work in the human service field, as you eloquently said, I know a lot of people like that. They can they can act in like a like a decent person, but you ask them to write a full sentence, you're better off asking a banana to become an orange. <laughs> All right. I don't even know why I said that, but I mean, I could go on about this forever. I mean, even before Mikey was shot and killed, I had these beliefs, and now I mean. We're gonna we're gonna move on. We're gonna get back over. Yeah, but you know what? If you, see, if you want change, guys, you, you have gotta to fight for it. You, and not only that, you gotta be the change. You know, like I know it's I know it's really cheesy. Michael Jackson said it. You start with the man in the mirror, though. You really start wow, with yourself. Dude. You really do. Because if you cannot lead by example, <laughs> then all you're doing is pointing all right at the pile of poop and telling everyone how stinky the big pile of poop is instead of cleaning it up and coming up with solutions on how to prevent that from happening again and preventing it from you know uh being in your way all right but i mean be part of the solution not the problem rest in peace mikey yeah rest in peace condolences sir. to the family but let's move on with the nfl now basically we're gonna rock in our next segment here with the player card now oh. basically we get the player card um generally I'm just looking into uh, kind of like a behind the music like VH1 used to do a little before you were drafted what's gone on in their career we're getting it from you know like trading cards and how they had the stats on the back so uh, who's this week's player card on John I did it on Mr. Khalil Mack all right well before you get there you did it on Khalil Mack but let me get a second here to plug your article and to plug the new phenomenal greatest site on the internet oh. voiceofbedlam.com complete face lift all right um not just the podcast anymore all right we have a full blog going we have everybody on the show writing we got sam stocks writing over for us in the uk with uh, pro football spot and uh, we have a couple other people also uh who you're going to start meeting if you uh go to voice go over to contributors you can see everybody that's on there and not only We're that also if you if you love football and you have a sensibility and you can write why don't you make some money with us? And you can do that by emailing us at staff at voiceofbedlam.com. Email us staff at voiceofbedlam.com. You can also go to voiceofbedlam.com, click on become a contri become contributor. A contrib yeah, there you go. John said it. Contributor. Yes, contributor. And uh, basically, um, we can get into the details when you email yeah, me. But, but you'll but, be able to earn money on your own time. Honestly, it's not going to be like big bucks, but at least it's oh, money no, on you your can own make term. some money. But you, know, <laughs> but you got to put the time into it. Absolutely. I'm saying if, you know, the time that you put into it is what you'll receive back. Now, there are some standards. It's we need some sample writing, so head over to voiceofbedlam.com, click on become a contributor, find out what all the requirements are, hit me up, staff at voiceofbedlam.com or on Twitter at Andrew Bedlam. Alright, but uh, John's first article published: the silver and black, silver and black, are ready to attack. So, so says, says Mac. Mac. Love the title. Love the title. I, I, Why don't you tell us a little about Mac and the article? Yeah, that, I, I had a second title in mind too. I, I thought it was like I was thinking of a, a song called "Return of the Mac," and then I was like, and then I was like, like, but I was like, nah. I, I was like, I don't think a lot of people would know the reference. You know, so I was like, you know, what? that's that, I'm gonna stick with that one. But uh, you know, he's a uh, uh, his, his he's he hails from Florida, went to Buffalo uh, University, and the Raiders drafted him in the 2014 draft, first round with the fifth pick. All right, he is 6'3", 252 pounds. He's a defensive end, and he also can also step back and be an outside linebacker. Now that's a pretty versatile dude. All right, uh, yeah, here's Khalil Mack is definitely you know uh, the young up and coming defensive uh, player right now. Yes, um, him and Aaron um, the, the the Rams. Yes, uh, Aaron Donald. Correct. Yes. Sorry, I was I was gonna let you get get that name out there. All right, so I'm gonna get, I'm gonna run through some of his career highlights and awards. All right, he made the Pro Bowl in 2015. First team All Pro 2015 for outside linebacker, defensive end. Puya. Um, he, uh, eight, uh, Oakland Raiders franchise record for sacks in a game. He got five, all right, against them Denver Broncos. Yes. Yes. So that's why I, 
I'm feeling the silver and black, and there's a Division lot of people feel, And you Denver know what? Broncos. You know, and, and, and not. To, I'm gonna interrupt my own segment right now, just because you know what? I see a lot of people jumping on the bandwagon, people. I see you jumping on the bandwagon on the silver and black bandwagon. All right, like I see you. I see you now. I see you. But uh, you know, uh, at least give me some credit. Please. <laughs> I've been saying it. I've been saying it in America. Well, I mean, they got Carr. They got Cooper. Oh. They got Mac. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, the they Raiders got- are young. And, they, and they're talented. They're, yeah, I mean, they are definitely – I expect the Raiders to, to take off this year. I'm not saying they're going to win the Super Bowl. I expect the Raiders to at least win a playoff game this year. Indeed. So, you know, the uh, ESPN's Defensive Rookie of the Year in 2014, AFC De- uh, Defensive Player of the Week, uh, Week 14 of 2015, uh, the Castro Edge Clutch Performer of the Week, uh, Week 14 of 2015, um, the MAC Defensive Player of the Year in 2013, First Team All American in 2013, three time First Team All MAC to, through 2011 and 2013. And then the third uh, team All Amer- uh, All, uh, All MAC in uh, 2010. So, um, he, you know, he's he's been in the spotlight all through college. And then now he's in the spotlight in uh, Oakland. He's uh, he's putting up, uh, you know, he's putting up good numbers, uh, you know, because he's a big dude, six foot, you know, two, uh, a six foot three almost. Uh, and, he, and he's explosive. I know I, I like to watch the Raiders games, especially on the Sunday NFL ticket, um, you know, which, you know, we're going to have to get our uh, our direct TV number back on here. So you guys can also get your Sunday NFL ticket. I will get that now. Keep talking. So, you know, because I, I like watching the Raiders games because it's always out of market. And plus, that's my first team. You know, I, I still got love. Uh but uh, also writing about this up and coming uh, team where uh, Khalil Mack is like I, I would say the the big uh, you know spotlight uh, player on that defense. Absolutely. You know if if he I would say he's the Jenga piece. You know a lot of people like to think of like things as a game, uh, and uh, and what's more important and than the you know a stability of uh, your foundation in Jenga. And I think if you take Khalil Mack out. Uh, the Raiders' defense is going to look a little bit shabby. Oh, absolutely. I mean, the Raiders, they got more than Mac. I'm trying to bring up their roster here. But, I mean, Mac is definitely well, they the got Well, uh, uh, they got Hayden in the cornerback. Uh, they have uh, the uh, uh, Carl Joseph, the, str- uh, the new safety back there. Uh, John doing his homework. TJ Carey, right? So, you know, they got they got some veteran leadership, and they, but mostly their players are like four-year players and rookies that are very young. And not only But they're that, starting to mature and grow together, and exactly. that's what builds a winning franchise. Yeah, so that next man mentality that is, you know, needed in surviving injury bugs and things like that throughout the season – you know, they're, they're primed with young talent. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm on board. And I'm just, uh, you know, to, to shine some light on Khalil, you know, he's he's just a monster. You know, he was a monster in, in college. And he's a, he's a monster in, uh, uh, in the key focal point for this uh, Oakland Raiders defense. Yeah, without a doubt. Now, basically, at voiceofbedlam.com, you can check out John's article, The Silver and Black Are Ready to Attack, So Says Mac. Now, basically, uh, Mac went was quoted as saying that he thinks what the the Raiders could be even better than last year's Broncos. Oh defense. yes, they they he's com, he's already comparing them to uh, last year's number one defense. Uh, so, and as I see here, Sean just po- uh, published Eagles need someone to tote the rock. So you guys can uh, go over there. That just got published. There's a bunch more articles up on the site already. We got 2016 receiving title early predictions, kind of what our four minute hut was about last week we got injury bug bites bills so i mean go over there click around there's a bunch more articles look around you can watch the video podcast right on the site as well as listen to the audio and both those things are available on the podbean app yeah uh itunes stitcher google play music 
pretty much everywhere. YouTube, you guys can find us. And just like I said about DirecTV for that Sunday NFL ticket, because, you know, if you're supporting those out-of-market teams and you really want to watch them games, you got to hit up DirecTV, 855-668-9061. That's 855-668-9061. Give that number a call. Get yourself set up, because they always usually have good specials, which you could probably get that Sunday NFL ticket free. Free installation. Free. Yes, you will for the first yep. year. Yeah, so you you know they get that first year free, and uh, you know it's you know I, I think it's worth it. Honestly, uh, I you know, and I'm not just saying that because uh, I'm you know I'm I'm not getting paid to say that right now. So I'm telling you, I enjoy it because I'm a Panthers fan, and I love to watching the Raiders games. And now that uh, this podcast is up in uh, up and coming, you it know, is I, moving I, so much more than a podcast now. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> like now I have to stay current with all these other teams. So Red Zone with uh, Andrew Siciliano is going to be on in my house every Sunday. So if you're my homie and you live in my neighborhood, you already know what I'm doing on Sundays now. All right, guys. All right, no four-minute hut tonight. No Sean. No King Kojo Colin on the phone. What do you think? I think we did an all right but job you know without what? him. You know, you know what, though? We brought you, you know, uh, heartfelt content. Uh we gave you a little more insight of you know who we are as people and what we stand for and honestly you know uh you know i i i honestly respect people through and through and i i like to say that i associate with myself with people of the same caliber and that's why this podcast is you know launching off as fast as it is because we keep it real we're giving you our hearts we're giving you knowledge and what we know and we're filling in a little we're trying we, we fill in an opinion but we try to keep it as factual as possible because we don't want to sound stupid you know so you know you ain't gonna get something stupid from us <laughs> but yeah, at uh, least but I hope you won't. <laughs> not at all. But you know, if you guys, you know, now nah, you won't. Th you thank, us. <laughs> thank you, thank you for supporting us thus far. You know, tell your friends. You know, as you as you know, as this thing is growing, you know, we're gonna get bigger guests coming in, and we're, they're gonna be talking. But we also want to hear from you guys. You know, not only in the YouTube comments, which Hashtag if you can hit them up, hot. you know, hit us up on the. Now we're on Instagram, which I'm gonna be running that because I, I actually like Instagram Google. a lot. Plus, uh, Google Plus, iTunes, you know, the YouTube again, all right? Because, you know, the video is just so important because people like to put the face with a voice, and uh, we get to do that now. Um, so, you know, thank you for your continued support uh, for the people that have been with us. Um, and not only that, uh, you know, spread the word, and thank you to new listeners that are just taking the chance to give us a listen because we're going to we're gonna continue to give you that content that you need. Now, um, we're going to get out of here today with We Are The Ones by Defiance off Punk Core Records. Going to play this song out for Mikey. But, guys, thanks for sticking around. Hope you enjoyed the show. Tell your friends. Come back next time. Check out voiceofbedlam.com. Click on Be A Contributor. See if you got what it takes to join the Bedlam, te the Bedlam team. List of requirements. Please, only serious applicants. Staff at voiceofbedlam.com. Had a great Thank time. You guys thanks for hanging out with us we'll catch you next tuesday let the song roll john let the song roll